So uh, the talk we'll be doing today is reaching 100 million girls through Wagtail. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Cody. I am a backend developer at Precult.org. I've been at Precult for four years now, and I'm specifically uh, working on the Springster project. Cool. Um, Lisa, and um, I've been at Precult.org for three years now. Um, I'm currently a project slash product manager on the Girl Effect portfolio and specifically on the Springster project. Cool. So, Girl Effect and Precult.org have a partnership. Um, we are their technical partner. Um, Girl Effect started in 2015 as part of uh, Nike Foundation's social enterprise. Um, they now moved on to being an independent organization funded by multiple other organizations. Um, together, we are experts in media, mobile, brand, and international development, um, working where girls are marginalized and vulnerable. Um, we build youth brands and mobile platforms um, that millions of girls and boys uh, interact with on a daily basis. So anything from apps that build skills to TV dramas that explore vital issues, um, magazines written and distributed by girls. Um, so our, our joint mission is putting mobile technology in uh, girls' hands. Um, and this way, girls can now find, um, find things out. They can uh, talk to others and express themselves in ways that they never could before. Um, and we started by understanding the girls' lives and the challenges that they face, and then design the mobile platforms to help them overcome um, those specific challenges so they can build the confidence to create positive change in their lives. Um, in the research that we conducted, we found that uh, two-thirds of the global population have mobile phones. We also found that 200 million fewer women than men have mobile phones, and that two-thirds of new mobile subscribers will be female over the next five years. So um, with all of that, that research, um, we kicked off with, um, with so this is basically Girl Effect is a, a portfolio, and the portfolio has multiple projects underneath them. Um, and the first one that we kicked off with was uh, Moby Sites, and it's currently the largest portion of the portfolio. So um, these uh, Moby Sites are mainly hosted on Facebook's Free Basics platform, um, but they also have standalone sites. Um, and Cody will talk a bit more about the tech stack for that. Um, so our, our biggest um, countries at the moment are South Africa with 1.9 million users, Nigeria 1.8 million users, Indonesia 1.6, and Philippines 1.1. Um, collectively, we are in 67 countries within 16 languages. Um, like I mentioned, each country has a standalone site. Um, in total to date, we have 16 million users collectively, with an average of about 1 million users um, a month. And that's just for Springster within Girl Effect? Yeah, so that's one portion of this portfolio and mission to uh, reaching as many girls as we can. Um, so with that said, um, Springster specifically, um, which is the, the project via the Mobi sites, uh, encourages users to register. Um, on the platform, so they have profiles, um, and that enables them to comment on articles and submit their own stories and participate in surveys. We've also expanded our surveys to include kind of um, uh, logic to them so that we can select different kinds of users based on their gender, their age, um, and kind of where their activity is on the site. Um, so Springs the Girls, uh, they, they benefit from reassurance and advice generated by, by shared stories and experiences from other girls like them. Um, and so it's very uh, community driven. So uh, to date, we have 71,000 registered users on this platform, uh, 30,000 comments. Comments was something that we just launched um, a couple of months ago, so that's fairly new. And 6,000 users submitted their own stories. Um, these community features are currently only open to uh, our four A market sites, so that's Indonesia, Philippines, South Africa, and Nigeria. Um, so this is not available on the remainder of the 60. 
three sites. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. And I'll hand over to Cody to talk a little bit about our our, our technical journey with this platform. Cool. Um, so before I give you an example of how that looks on the uh, front end and how the admin for that looks, what we started off with was 67 applications and each application had a front end, it had a CMS and within each CMS there was a site that pointed to a root page um, which is the tree of content. And I can just show you how one of those looks on the front end. So this is a Springster site. Um, this is currently in uh, Bahasa, so I don't really actually understand. Um, but this is all the contents. These are polls that we do. Um, yeah, this is how the site looks. And all of the content that's on this site is managed by Wagtail. So this is how our admin looks. This is the root page. We have, um, we've built sort of index pages here. And then we've gone into, um, let's say sections. And this is an article. Um, something that we've also done is like Lisa mentioned, we needed this in quite a lot of languages. So we've had to build our own implementation of internationalization. And how we did that was we display an article in its um, in the main language and any sub language will be displayed as a button. You can then click on that button and it will open up. Um, Unbelievable. It will open up a uh, sort of boilerplate for a translation. Um, this is a live site, so I will not actually be doing anything. And there are so many things that we've added to just articles, more than subtitle images. We use um, stream fields for the body. Um, we added commenting settings, social media uh, tags, things like questions that are reaction questions. So you can add a question and it will populate it with emojis and they can react how they felt towards the article, recommended articles in related sections. Um, and promotion for how things get promoted on the home page, um, some metadata and um, scheduled publishing, which is um, standard. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've got, we've using the um, models, we've created comments. And so this is how um, our moderators can go through all the comments that were made on articles and can add replies to them. They can see whether, you know, um, how many times something's been reported, um, which site it's come from. Uh, we can also view surveys. We can create surveys and view survey responses on the admin. Um, and we can even turn these responses into articles or, or download it as CSVs. Um, and particularly something with the languages that we've done is we've made it, we've made languages the same thing as a site setting. Um, but because this is just a single instance, I will show you a little bit later on how that works on, with a multi instance. So we've got Indonesian here as the main language and English as a secondary language. Um, so as you can see, we've added a lot to our, to our, uh, to our admin and all of that results in what this looks like here on the front end. I mean, th even things like these banners, everything is, is managed on our admin. So we started off with 67 individual, <clears throat> 67 individual applications that each had its own CMS um, site and root page. But this was very difficult to maintain. <clears throat> and so what we did was we used the Wagtail's implement implementation of um, a multi-site CMS. And we, so I just need a sip of water. <laughs> and we created, um, we went down from 67 to 15 um, applications that had a front end and had multiple sites. And each of these sites would point to its own root page. Um, and that made things a little easier because we were able to copy between root pages. So we could sort of upload once on one page on one tree and then just copy it over to um, the rest of them. Yeah, and uh, another reason that we did this was because the, um, so the way that those are grouped are into language, um, 
language groupings. So we have like an English cluster, a Spanish cluster, and the idea is that the content is kind of like generic um, for, for, for the, like in, within those clusters. And so it, we needed to find a way to easily share content um, between them as opposed to uploading something 67 times is what we were initially doing. And that was just the English translation. And then we need to do it another 67 times to put it in the translated version. So this reduced the, the, the time that it was taking for our content uploaders to actually get the content on the site. Yeah, and just to show you how that looks on our um, admin side is this is our English cluster, which is our biggest cluster. Um, it currently has 31 countries, which are each represented here by its own root page. And each of these 31 countries, um, essentially each of them have the same content. Um, so something that we, we did to sort of make things easier, um, Wagtail gives you a, a copy functionality. Um, and we can copy whole sections or even um, a, whole, a whole root page, as you, as you, as you call it. Um, but something that we added was a, a copy to all feature. So we could click copy to all and it will copy to all the countries um, under the same section with all the settings um, since, all of the, since all of the countries have the same content. And we, we made use of the site settings feature quite nicely and we added a few of our own here. So for the languages one, we could on the side click between countries. So obviously these all have English, um, but we could click between countries here and it will show us the different language for that country. Um, we used uh, site settings to put things like um, Google Analytics codes and, and content rotation times and social media um, sharing buttons so that each country can still have its own, its own links on that. Um, and the, the importance that the reason why each country ha needs its own link is because of free basics, um, which is what we use to to uh, get our sites out to the goals for free. And so um, free basics requires that each site has its own URL, which causes a lot of complexity. Um, but yes, this is how this is one of our multi site implementations and how that looks on a site level. Is we have all of these sites and they each point to its own root page, um, which was the next iteration. But this still meant that um, it's, it's great that you can copy to all countries, um, but things like deleting from all countries, you know, what, what happens if you made a mistake and now you need to go and edit it and then redo it, you then need to go delete again and then copy again. Um, and it, it would just still was uh, so much of a hassle. So something I did, uh, we actually got the opportunity to attend the previous Wagtail Sprint, uh, Wagtail Space in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And I got to work with um, one of the, the, the members of the team and create, uh, make it possible so that we have multiple sites pointing to one root page. This, this, is, this was previously possible with Wagtail, um, but it, it, there was some difficulties there with um, what's what's the default site and and the correct settings and the correct site pulling through when you when you're selecting um, a URL. So what we're busy what we're working on now is getting this uh, this implemented where we have multiple sites pointing to one root page, um, and then even though we'd still have 15 applications, we would no longer have 67 root pages. Um, and so we've we've really been on a journey with our infrastructure with Wagtail. Um, we actually started out our journey with a Django CMS, but we soon realized that in order to, to effectively edit content on, a, on, a, on Django CMS, you'd, you'd need to understand the, the backend behind it, and which made it very difficult for our content partners. And um, in combination with that, we also had a mission and engaging with girls and allowing them to engage with each other. And so we needed to look for something that was more flexible. Um, as you can see on the left-hand side, there were no profiles available. There were no community features like surveys and polls. Um, and that's where um, our, our journey with Wagtail began. began. Yeah. yeah, and as we've, as we've changed implementations of Wagtail or CMSs, our, our front end has also changed. Um, quite a bit and this is the current the one on the on the right spring is how it currently looks um but spring is not the only 
a project that we've used Wagtail on. Another one was mentor to go Yeah, so mentor to go falls under the Girl Effect portfolio as well. Um, mentor to go launched in January 2017, um, and this mobile mentorship Android app builds on the activities on existing local programs um, to reach goals between the ages of 15 and 18, particularly in rural and semi-urban areas in India. Um, the program basically connects goals in, in, in these rural areas to female mentors and it builds on an existing local in-person mentoring service. So we partnered with, uh, with mentor to go to build out the application. Um, so vulnerable girls basically enroll in the program and are expected to, um, at the end of it, demonstrate an, an increased self-confidence um, and, yeah. Um, so the Android app or the mentor connects them to the mentee via a free call and is supported by an open source uh, backend. Uh, Cody will tell us a little bit more about that. And the program offers a flexible schedule to accommodate um, the mentor's responsibilities and professional obligations, as well as the girl's uh, school timings. And, and part of this was having a curriculum that the, the mentor could work from to help them guide the kind of content that they wanted to work through and, and, and kind of go through these activities and, and basically also have a feedback loop to say, how did it go? And something that we could actually track um, and engage with. Cool. And how the how that looked was we had an Android app that um, we pretty much had a, a CMS with uh, one set of content and it's just made API calls um, between the app and the CMS. And so in using Wagtail in these many different ways and having so many things that we've sort of built on top of it and customized, um, we've gotten to a point now where we're actually trying to use Wagtail in a new way and that is um, using it as a, as a headless CMS. So with all of these countries, with all of it, all of these different projects. Um, and the content being our biggest asset. Yeah. Um, having one CMS with one uh, tree structure that holds all the content for all these different apps. Um, and then having these uh, apps or front ends just feed from the CMS. Um, uh, which, you know, would seem like, why didn't we do this from the start? Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we started with four countries going on to five, going on to six, then going on to 67, these things don't really seem obvious in the beginning. Um, but one thing that we've really tried to do as a company is not stay, uh, is to not stay loyal to old tech and, and continuously try and change um, the approach that we are taking in order to bring the, the best or most benefit to the girls. Um, but on the on, on the on the journey, we've learned many lessons. I think the biggest lesson that we've learned is that number one, Wagtail is very customizable. Um, but with that, you know, with that said, we 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 went and we we created all sorts of things, and we customized, and we created internationalization. We we did so much to the point where we've realized that it's becoming uh, it's not manageable and it's not sustainable. And instead of taking Wagtail and customizing it so much, we've now gotten to the point where we actually, as an organization, want to um, contribute more to Wagtail and use more of a vanilla version of Wagtail than, than, um, than customize things on our own. And so during this process, you know, we have asked ourselves, uh, why Wagtail? Uh, you know, why not a, a different one? And I think Wagtail speaks to our uh, core values as a company. So these are our values as a company. Um, and I've just put a, a sentence down there around what Wagtail brings us, uh, what Wagtail adds to those values. So Wagtail allows us to customize our users' experience. Uh, our users have a lot of, um, there's a lot of challenges with that. So our users, uh, Access our sites from phones that um, that don't uh, that are not compatible with JavaScript. So we needed we needed a way we can create content and and um, easily from an admin's point of view, but get it to a very simple format um, to the end user's point of view, and make it personal. Um, we needed we needed a CMS that was scalable. Um, we needed we also needed a, a CMS that was co-designed. And that took into account the the, the system users' uh, needs. 
an another big reason why we went with Wagtail was because it's accessible. And I think one thing that I definitely uh, saw in the in the last uh, Wagtail space was that Wagtail is accessible to many people with a with a range of disabilities, which makes it a lot easier um, to upload content. Cool. Um, and so, with that said, I believe that Wagtail provides us with the technical flexibility, which allows for diversity and directly safeguards our users' dignity because we are able to um, give them the kind of experience that they need um, and meet them where they at. Yeah. But with great flexibility comes great responsibility, which is something which is our biggest takeaway uh, from from our, our journey with Wagtail. And so Lisa is going to speak a little bit about some of the things that that uh, we can do as um, members of the Wagtail team to make sure that we are taking the responsibility uh, seriously. Yeah, so at the last um, Wagtail space, I spoke a little bit about the idea of personas. Um, and in reaching 100 million girls, we also rely on a team of content partners within those areas. Um, and so we, we really need to focus on the kind of access that they have as well. Um, and so I came up with, this is like really just a mock-up um, and myself and the core team are meant to collaborate more on this. But the idea was just to show a little bit like um, what who the user is, um, their role as maybe like a content chief editor, the languages that they speak, because that needs to be taken into account, their location. And then just a little bit about this individual's goal. So this one, she's deter with, sorry, she's determined to drive a content team to deliver tailored content for all the girls. And some of her challenges are things take a lot of time to get done. Our team struggles to sometimes understand the structures of the CMS. Um, and then I also thought it was important to have um, some kind of view on what her technological access looks like. Um, so looking at both her mobile device and then also her computer. Um, and we've realized that those two things have become important for us on the project that we're working on in trying to safeguard our, our users. And we've tried to implement things like two-factor authentication and I had to come back and reiterate on that because we realized that there's, they don't have the kind of cell phones that can support the application needed for, for us to do that. Um, and then it's also important to understand how long they are spending their time on CMS, the kind of activities that they use um, their devices for. And then what their internet access looks like and where they act, what they access in. Um, so I kind of just did the, the same thing um, for kind of like the moderator point of view, um, also unpacking um, the similar kind of goals and challenges and tech. Um, the specific uh, uh, system user has um, limited internet access but she's a moderator and sometimes things take long to load because there are so many comments on the site. And that's the kind of thing that we need to take into account when we are building for comments. And then the same thing, again, from a content writer perspective. Um, and so one, one of the things that we are really uh, trying to, to get at is that um, when you, as a contributor to, the, to Wagtail, when you contribute to Wagtail, you not only contribute to the code base of a CMS, but you contribute to the well-being of millions of girls. And that's something that we try to take into account whenever we, we're building a feature or, or trying, to, um, trying to, to get something out there, is that it's not just code, it's not just a CMS, it's actually, it's actually a gateway to um, the well-being of 100 million girls. Um, thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm just saying yeah. that was amazing. And I'm sorry the camera's facing the wrong way, so you can't see the room full of people uh, who are applauding you. I'm afraid you cut out for three minutes, which was awful, but uh, the whole thing was, was recorded, so uh, we can watch those the missing three minutes later. Uh, if anyone has questions, I can pass them on. There's a question about the amazing uh, multilingual implementation and uh, and how much of that <laughs> is open source. Um, 
So all of all of our code is actually open source. And Springster, so uh, as Prey called, we developed something called Molo, which allows uh, which allows us to basically um, create these different projects that use Wagtail. So Springster is one of them. Tune me. There's a whole bunch, but we've got Molo, which is like this cookie cutter app that can create these projects for you, and all of that is available um, via Molo. Uh, and there's there's things like uh, Molo profiles and Molo surveys, um, advanced surveys. All of that is actually open source. Cody, maybe you could, share the, could you share the link to that on the Slack, the, the US Web Test based Slack? Sure, I can. Uh, we are currently uh, in the space of revamping all of that um, and, and doing it in much better ways and iterating over that, but I can definitely make what's there available. Cool. Can you say something about deployment with all the languages, with all the, the many sites? How do you handle that? Yeah, so we uh, we use Spinnaker to deploy to all of our sites. Um, I'm not sure if there was a, spe a specific question around that, but we pretty much just um, if, if we use one we use one code base and we make those changes, which gives us a tag that we can then just deploy to all of these sites. Yeah. that's it for now. Thank you very much. It was great. Thank you. Thank you.